Hi viewers, in this video I will show you the G Patriot lifting points and also how I use a scissor jack, a floor jack or car ramps. This chassis design has four pinch weld jacking points and four lifting points. Normally the pinch weld points should be used with a scissor jack to change a flat tire. If someone has to change a flat tire on the side of the road, the pinch welds are well located near the wheels. The pictograms on the scissor jack also show the basic safety requirements to follow. To use the jack, the vehicle must be parked on a firm surface with an even level as far as possible from the road traffic. It is dangerous to jack up a vehicle when it is on ice, on snow, on a slope or on a slippery surface. If the pinch weld looks like this, it is not safe to use the scissor jack, so you should call for the roadside assistance. To keep the vehicle as stable as possible, the parking brakes must be engaged. The automatic transmission must also be in park position or the manual transmission in reverse position. Then the ignition is turned off and the hazard flashers are turned on. Nobody should remain inside the vehicle during the wheel replacement. The wheel on the diagonal opposite side of the wheel that is lifted should be blocked with wheel chocks. The lug nuts must be loosened only when the tower is on the ground. Usually I unscrew the wheel nuts about a quarter turn to a half turn. The scissor jack must be positioned straight up and must be well engaged with the pinch weld close to the wheel that has to be replaced. The jack only needs to be raised enough to create a clearance to remove the wheel and install the spare tire. Then the five lug nuts can be refitted and lightly tightened as shown. To avoid destabilizing the vehicle, the lug nuts must be fully tightened only when the wheel is lowered on the ground. In order to evenly apply the torque on each of the lug nuts, they should be tightened in a star pattern twice. For safety, the torque should be set to 100 foot-pounds with a torque wrench. To drive safely, the temporary spare tire must also be properly inflated. Next, the wheel and the tools are secured in the lower cargo area. It's important to have the tire fixed and reinstalled as soon as possible. These four lifting points are made to be used with commercial car lifts and floor jacks. The underbody structure of this vehicle is also reinforced with extra underbody rails. These underbody rails and side members offer strong lifting points. When these four lifting points are used together, they provide a good center of gravity. They are also compatible with most hydraulic floor jacks. To reduce the risk of injury or worse, the wheel on the diagonal opposite side of the section that is lifted must be blocked with the wheel chocks as shown. Most of the time I also block a second wheel to improve the stability of the vehicle. With a Jeep Patriot, a 3-ton floor jack is a good choice to reach the lifting points and jack up the wheels high enough to remove them easily. In this view, I show how I jacked up the rear left side of the vehicle. At first, I positioned the floor jack saddle directly under the lifting point. Next, I slowly raised the lifting arm to lift this section of the vehicle. The wheels of the floor jack must properly rotate to adapt to the changing geometry. When there is enough clearance, a suitable jack stand is safely placed just underneath the rail close to the lifting point. Then, the floor jack is slowly lowered to properly sit the rail on the jack stand. After, when the work is completed, the section is lifted again to remove the jack stand. Then the vehicle is slowly lowered and the floor jack is removed. A similar positioning is used to lift the front side. In this case, the floor jack is placed under the rear lifting point. Next, one or two jack stands can be placed underneath the rail beside the floor jack to secure the working area. When the work is completed, the jack stand is removed and the vehicle is lowered. Personally, if I have to work under the engine or change the oil, I prefer to use car ramps. First, I position the front wheels straight ahead, then I place the ramps well aligned with the wheels as shown. 
The vehicle must be slowly driven up the ramps, then the front wheels are safely stopped in place. I often use a mirror to know where the front wheels are located on the ramps. An assistant can also guide the driver if the ramps don't have proper stop walls. Even on ramps, safety is important, so I always block the rear wheels with wheel chocks. When the work is completed, I remove the wheel chocks and any objects left on the ground. Then, when the area is secure, the vehicle can be slowly removed from the ramps. Car ramps can slide on surfaces like epoxy, so I use rubber mats to keep them in place whenever I drive the vehicle up. 